Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Super Mario game in Unity 5. Welcome to episode 17. So since the last episode I've quickly put together a little something here, just building up a little bit so we can work towards this episode. I did it on a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this episode we'll be adding some fire, uh, fireballs, and we'll get this ledge moving constantly up. So as it, we have a constant flow of ledges going up, across the, uh, up on the screen. So firstly, let's get in our fire texture. So let's go to our textures folder and I'm going to drag and drop this fire texture, which you can get on our website for free. Head on over there, head to downloads and assets, and it's uh, on the Super Mario series. So next what we need to do is we need to make an area where our fire will be. So the idea of what I want to do is the spinning kind of line of fireballs that you get in a normal Mario game. So I'm going to have it about here. So to do that, I'm going to take um, this block, duplicate it, and drag it out of the parent object, and then close that up again. So we now have a duplicate um, block just here. I'm going to bring it up and center there. Uh, I think I will shrink it in size as well. So 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. I'm just going to bring it down to about there, which should be 0.75 on the Y axis. Uh, I'm going to use this dead block texture on it as well. Uh, let's also bring it right to the edge there. About there, so it should be probably 27.75. That should line up quite nicely, and it does. Uh, right click, rename, and let's just call it dead block zero zero one next thing we're going to do is going to add a particle system to it so on this dead block right click and go to particle system now a particle system can be used to create many many different effects to from like snow rain fire orbs um just little bits of debris for example uh, it all depends on how you actually set the particle system up. So, like I say, it can be used for a lot of things, even fog, for example. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into more of a fireball. And there's a couple of different ways we can do it, but I'm going to do the easiest way that I know. So over here on particle system in the inspector panel, let's change a couple of things. Duration, let's keep as five. Looping, we'll have ticked, which is fine because we want it to continually loop. We don't want any start delay and the start lifetime is fine at five seconds. So what we'll do is start speed, we'll change to 0 0.1. So it's a bit slower. And as you can see, it kind of creates a misty effect. That's what we want at the moment. Start size, we will decrease the size of this. So we'll change it just a little. So half of it, so 0 0.5. And as I say, you can change these settings at any point to give you the best looking effect. I'm just going to go through this now to create the fireball effect, which I think is best. So you feel free to change as and when you need to. Start color, I'm going to have as an orangey color. So we'll have about, yeah, that looks fine. So it doesn't particularly look like fire at the moment, even with this color. But as long as it's a rough orange color, it'll do. So as we go further down, you can see that we don't need to modify anything here. Obviously, the gravity modifier would bring it down. This is like, for example, where you could have rain effects. So we'd have it as zero for now because we're going to rotate this in a ball. Um, everything there is fine. Max particle 1000. Yep, that's fine. Emission 10. Yep, that looks good to me. Now shape. There's different shapes you can have a particle system. It's set to cone by default. So if we change to sphere, for example, you'll see it kind of radiates in a sphere shape. Same with hemisphere. Uh, let's choose edge, I think. So this gives us a kind of flat look that we need. And we're going to change the radius to the lowest possible number we can have. In this case, it's 0 0.01. And already you should be able to see it's turning into a bit of a fireball. So the next thing we need to change is going to be rotation over lifetime. And as it isn't ticked on the little circle, just tick the circle there. Then click on rotation over lifetime and let's change this to 90. I think it's a decent number. 
And what I'm going to do now is I am going to add the fire to the particle system. So drag and drop your fire texture onto that particle system. Now it'll go a bit crazy, but don't worry too much. You can hopefully see the fire is starting to take effect. What we need to do is click down here on our texture, and then we need to go to particles and additive. And we should be able to see that the fire is starting to take shape. So what we may need to do as well to give it a bit more of a, a fireball look is rotate on a couple of axes until you get it into the fireball shape that you would want. So just a little bit more. So there we go. We'll have that as 90, I think. And that'll probably do as minus 90. So there we go. I'm now going to let me see what should I do. Let's change this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And so now we have the uh, fireball pretty much ready to go. So what we need to do is in dead block, right click, 3D object and cube. Now drag and drop the particle system onto that cube. Now this cube itself will be what we rotate. So the fire itself rotates. So what we need to do is get the fire into the correct position. So let's drag it out to about there. Let's duplicate, drag another one, duplicate again, and drag another one. So the idea is this is now going to rotate around our dead block. So on the cube, you just need to untick mesh renderer. Next thing we need to do is create just a quick little script. It's nice and simple, this one. So let's go to scripts. Right click, create, and let's call this fire ball rotate. And let's open it up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, whichever one you have. And I say it's a real, real simple script, this one. It's just a function, update, and we're going to transform dot rotate. And in brackets, we're going to do it on the uh, which axis are we going to rotate this on? The Z. As we can see, we know it's the Z because we want it to rotate around this way. So this little bit here would be the center. So we need to rotate on the blue, which is the Z. So the numbers we're going to put here, let's try zero and zero. And here we want it to rotate uh, counterclockwise. So we'll put minus one. And then we need to put space dot world because we need it to happen relative to the world around us close bracket semicolon and close curly bracket and save that script next thing we need to do is just drag and drop that onto our cube um what do we call it we called it uh, fireball rotate so it's this one so drag and drop onto the cube and while we're here let's right click and rename and just call this fireball object and let's quickly rename these fire 001 fire 002 and fire 003 so now hopefully what will happen is this will rotate nicely so let's press play and let's have a look okay so there we go so you can use that to your advantage. You can play around with these settings a little bit more and get them how you would want them. For example, uh, let's change the shape here and let's increase the radius. And you can see there that it changes quite vastly in that case. Or you could change it to sphere and you can see that it does make a little bit of a difference. But let's, let's change that. Let's try it all as sphere just to see what that looks like uh okay well let us so we'll have to do one at a time sphere and sphere again and let's have a quick look what this looks like this might look better actually we probably should have gone with sphere to begin with okay so that looks quite nice actually so I think I'm going to stick with the sphere. So 
you'll have noticed at this point we have this little ledge here that I keep jumping onto to get across. So what we want to do is make this ledge scroll upwards through the gap and make it a constant movement. So let's get to this. The best way to do this is have two constant um, ledges. And as you can see, this one's called ledge one, and I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to bring it up to about there, and I'm going to call that ledge zero, zero, two. Now the idea of what we're going to do here is we'll let it keep going up and then once it gets out of view of the camera we want it to change its position to down here so it just goes up once again and keeps repeating that process. So we don't even really need animation for this because we can do it all via scripting. So right click, create and let's call this script um, ledge, in fact let's change the caps slot there, ledge um scroll <clears throat> let's open that up in mono develop and we'll need um let's say two variables so we'll need the reset point and we'll need the point of where we are right now so far reset point and that is going to be a float semicolon next var and this will be our current point that's also going to be float semicolon so we'll need a function update open close bracket open curly bracket so what we'll do is firstly we'll define what our reset point is so reset point is equal to somewhere up here so we'll be doing this on just the y-axis because we don't need it to move um, to the right or left or forwards or backwards. We need it to move upwards. So the reset point is going to be when it gets to, let's say, there, which in this case is 6.52. So I'm going to put my reset point as 6.52, semicolon. And current point is going to be where it is at the moment. So we'll do current point is equal to the transform dot position dot y semicolon so now what we've done is we've defined where we want it to reset and we've defined where our current ledge is so i'm sure hopefully you've guessed by now what we need to do is check when our current point is greater or equal to the reset point so if open bracket current point is greater than or equal to reset point close bracket open curly bracket and then we need to define the position of where it should be which is going to be down here so let's check what position we want it to spawn in which is going to be let's say about here maybe so we'll say minus 3.5 so to do that, it's transform dot position dot y equals minus three point five two semicolon, and then close curly bracket to end that if statement, and hopefully that may just work. So we'll see how that goes now. So we need to attach uh, that script to uh, both ledges. So drag and drop ledge scroll onto ledge 001 and ledge scroll onto ledge 002. Uh, let's press play and let's have a look. Ah, of course, they're not actually moving, are they? So we need to get them moving. So um, we need to do transform dot um, translate. And we need to do vector three dot up because obviously we're going upwards. So we need to move it upwards relative to the game time. So time dot delta time. Close bracket, semicolon, and let's resave. Head back to Unity. Now, hopefully, both of these ledges should move up in real time. And they do. And now there we go. As we can see, 
the ledge has gone down and respawned underneath. Now if we click on our scene view without pressing play again, we should be able to see this in action. So we can see that the ledges move up as soon as you hit there, it respawns down here. Now it's just a case of measuring to get the distance correct. So if we said our distance was um, minus 3.5, I think we put, so about there, and we said the maximum was, how, what do we put, six, so we'll change that to 6.5 and minus 3.5 um, so it should be there so directly in the middle is where you would want a ledge to be so we can work that out quite simply or you can do it visually if you want so the difference we have there is what do we have 6.5 7 so it's yeah it's about nine difference there so if we drag this down to about there it should be now hopefully they should move a bit more organized or maybe not <laughs> i guess you could always have three ledges so if we have that about there have another one about there and let's change that to ledges zero zero three and let's press play and see how we get on okay so it's just a case of organizing yourself um, quite well with this. So I think I'm going to get rid of ledge three and let's have this about there. So now one more time, let's make sure we can use our ledges. Okay, looking good. And there's our fire. Excellent. Okay, so we've covered two different things in this. We've dealt with some fire and we've dealt with technically some physics. So next episode, what I want to do is bring in a timer, bring in some more UI to this level, and we'll also sort out a quick little death uh, script on both of these holes and the fire itself. So until next time, guys, you get your fireball looking exactly how you want it, and you mess around with your ledges and get them looking exactly how you want them to scroll up, and I will see you in the next episode. Guys, thank you for watching.